One thing I've stated in the past is that TNA fans, the core fan base, do not like per date contracts. They do not like freelancers on the roster. Now, I've never I've never said this before because I never thought about it, but I think they've been doing the freelancing thing for much longer than people truly realize. There was just an era where, you know, TNA would release a graphic and they say, hey, we signed Aaron Rex. We signed Cody Rhodes. You know, they, I know those are two random names, but they would just, you know, they would announce every signing. And for years, I think the fans just uh, correlated that with signed talent to the roster. You know, so um, no one's ever really thought, twice about it no one was you know the dirt sheets were never like they're there for three months they're there they're there on on short-term deals because we just kind of accepted who we saw on our screen and just assumed that they were there for the long haul sometimes they weren't you know i bring up aaron rex as an example Dam- damian sandow aaron stevens he he was only there for it seemed like longer but i feel like it was three four months so I, I think I think the free the freelancing thing has been a thing for a while now. We just don't, you know, we it, it just kind of went over our head. And then in the past, I would say maybe a year or two prior to the pandemic, there was just more information out there uh, regarding free agents, how long they were there, and the TNA social media would always let us know because. If someone's signing, they would say they're signing. If they're showing up to due dates, they they wouldn't announce it. Like they don't, they haven't announced Nick Nemeth. They haven't announced, uh, you know, like Matt Cardona when he shows up. Um, a lot of these dudes, you know, they're they're not. They they don't announce him as being signed. Like Zaya Brookside, they announced that they announced Kushida, you know, so that we know that they're part of the roster and we correlate that we associate that with when they make a social media media announcement that this person is around for the long term when they don't we know that they are a part-timer but then again again what i just said i think they've been doing this so much longer than we really give it credit for it's just the way that it's been delivered presented to the fan base so you know we've already discussed and you know other podcasts as well discuss that you know they're going to look at more per date deals which i don't think there's anything particularly wrong with that because uh you know you pay people for work you, you, for the work that they do not the work that they don't do i think that's probably good business the, the thing is the the core tna fan base does not like that they want to hear that someone was locked down for three years, that they um, that they got paid good money. Th- that's what the core fan base wants to hear. And when they don't get that, it does upset them. And that just comes from love of the company that you follow and wanting consistency in the program you watch and wanting consistency in the booking. And especially when a company like TNA is your favorite promotion. You want to feel like it's competitive with the others, even though it might not be, well, isn't, but you at least want to feel that you don't want to feel like you're following an independent. This is where I think things are going though. A guy like AJ Francis. Now he has, he has said on the Chris Van Vliet uh, podcast that he is open to signing long-term with TNA and making it his home. And that could be a possibility. But right now, the dude wrestles three promotions. Now, I would say TNA's his his focus because he's doing the TV tapings. I don't believe he's doing MLW tapings. He might just be doing, I don't even know if they call them pay-per-views or what. I just don't follow MLW enough, but I do see match graphics. And I just haven't seen him on anything. I've only seen him on like when they're uh, highlight, you know, when it's a hodgepodge of several talents, like it's a poster. Now, NWA is something I do follow. He has not showed up on television. He is not on the weekly show. 
I think they um I, I don't know exactly how they're doing their pay-per-views right now. I think they're gonna. I think they're re- recording them, then putting them on the app as a TV show. It's something I don't. I don't know yet. But we have not seen AJ Francis on screen yet. So I would say TNA is his home. But you know, when you're talking about handing out per date deals, I think what's going to happen uh, with a lot of wrestlers that they're just going to be like, we're going to do the three televised companies and i say televised like tv uh app youtube what whatever it is but but you know that there's they're in a tier together um which is above independent wrestling you know they're they're there's much more eyes on them than just doing the indies but i think there's probably a little more money in doing the indies but i think a way that a lot of these wrestlers and I, I don't know if it'll be like the current wrestlers who become free agents, but I think it'll be guys who, you know, leave a W leave WWE or they're fired or however that happens. I think the best way for them to stay relevant is to just do all the televised. Again, I'm using that for a lack of better term doing all the televised wrestling companies. It keeps them again, pretty relevant um, I, I'm sure there's quite a bit of crossover in the fan bases. You're working with a, a f- pretty wide variety of talents of different styles because if you compare MLW, NWA, and TNA, they have very they're very different. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I would differentiate them. I wouldn't I wouldn't compare any of them. I think the styles of the show, the styles of presentation, style of wrestling, is all different mlw is probably a little closer to um what tna does but you know as as far as style goes but i just think that this is what it's going to be i think it's um if you're going to get booked somewhere you might as well get booked somewhere that's going to have some eyeballs you know and then from there you do those dates you know and you can do your indie run but aj francis is you know basically part of three uh, Matt Cardone has done three. It would not sh- shock me if uh, Matt Riddle does all three. Um, if you guys remember, uh, I guess it's been about two years now. It doesn't feel like it's been that long, but Chelsea Green was doing NWA. She was doing TNA. She was doing um, Ring of Honor. I don't know if she did MLW. I have no idea whatsoever, but she was doing ring of honor. That's when it was kind of, you know, they were kind of still doing their, their thing. Um, Gosh, even, even the freaking Briscoes at one point were doing TNA and they were doing NWA again, no clue if they did MLW dates, Uh, the kingdom or OGK or whatever the hell their name was, but Mike Tevin, Mike, uh, Mike Bennett and Matt Taven, they were doing NWA and impact. You know, there's probably more to that. I didn't, I was, you know, I I took a big break from NWA because of Velvet Sky's commentary, but I just think that's what's going to happen. I think we're going to see it more and more. I I think we're seeing less and less people commit to these companies and just say, hey, we just want to do dates. Now, I know, for instance, NWA, when they bring people in to, to do dates, they feel more, more of a special attraction to where, TNA doesn't book that way. They don't bring in these part-timers as special attractions. They bring them in to wrestle for the title and oftentimes win, oftentimes win them. So that that's one of the differences. I don't think MLW books like that. I, I, as a matter of fact, I know they don't. Um, I, I know enough about their product and how they, what they've promoted and, and match results and shit to where they're just they're bringing a guy in and they're a special attraction. But TNA tries to ingrate, you know, integrate them into the fabric of the show, and then all of a sudden they're gone or, or what have you. Like everyone would have loved to see Trinity there long term, that wasn't happen. That didn't happen. Um, we would love to see Ali there long term. That's probably not going to happen. I don't know if he would do those other companies because he's doing so well on the indies. But I just again, I think we're going to see more and more. And, you know, guys like the Motor City Machine Guns might do it, too. I don't really know. 
Um, and I don't even know how Ring of Honor really operates at the moment. I think they're I don't know if they have any signed talent to that company, to be honest. They might all be freelancing, but they don't they don't announce it. So we just kind of we just kind of let it be. But I think we're gonna see less and less people commit to TNA. And that is something that I know the fans, as I said, they don't like it. They do not like that. They want to know that someone is there and they're going to be committed. But I think a lot of fans also have a very warped uh, idea of what the pay is that TNA provides for wrestlers. It's not to say it's bad money. I'd be willing to bet anything that they pay better than the other two companies I've been talking about. But uh, I think there is a distorted reality of what their financial situation is. So I think we're going to see that. And and frankly, we might get to that point where the three companies begin to cross, you know, uh, cross over with the talent they actually do have signed and locked down. Because that might be the only way that they can truly compete with the bigger companies. It might be the only advantage that they offer.